Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, my name is Amy. I'm on the sales side over here at VMRay, joined by our engineer, Ben Abbott. Um, and today we'd like to introduce you to the VMRay Analyzer. So our customer base utilizes VMRay for four major use cases. The first is going to be that advanced threat detection. Second is going to be the for alert triage, simplifying the alert process. Third, for instant response, fast in-depth visibility into confirmed incidents, as well as threat intel generation. And through our agentless approach to sandboxing, VMRay is providing you with evasion resistance. And what that means is we analyze at the hypervisor layer, which makes us undetectable. That's something that is unique to the VMRay technology. All signal, no noise. We're not going to be inundating your team with false positives, time wasting alerts, anything like that, um, really giving you just full alerts that your team needs to pay attention to full visibility into malware behavior and life cycle, as well as being fast and scalable for you and your team. I'll now hand it over to our engineer, Ben, to discuss how VMRay integrates with the, your security ecosystem. And like most modern sandboxes, VMRay allows users to be able to integrate it with other security solutions. So to be able to pass the samples over to VMRay for the sandbox analysis, but also pulling those results from the analysis back into those security solutions. And this could aim, aid with the incident response and threat intel generation. When a sample is submitted to VMRay, it goes through three steps before it gives the final verdict of that analysis. And the first step in this is our reputation analysis. And this can very quickly determine if that sample is already known to be malicious or benign, and it can return that information near instantaneously. Next, it will go through our static detection, which is going to do a deeper dive into that sample, looking specifically at the office documents and seeing if there's any active components on those uh, for, for things such as macros or embedded links and files. Lastly, it'll go through our core analysis, which is our dynamic analysis. And this is where the sample is actually detonated and allowed to run as it normally would. After this is completed, the user would receive a verdict of that sample. What's unique to VMRay is the way in which we monitor the sample's behavior. Most sandboxes will have an agent within that target environment in order to monitor the behavior of the malware. The issue here is that because that agent is changing the information within that target sample, the malware is able to detect that agent and can act as a normal benign file. With VMRay, since we monitor outside the target environment in the hypervisor level, there's no additional artifacts the malware can detect. And make sure to think about in today's presentation how to best utilize VMRay, whether that is through uh, any advanced threat detection to see how exactly the behaviors the malware would run, but also using this to triage any alerts and instant response and build any threat intel generation. When analysis is completed, you can open up a dynamic analysis report in order to view all the information that was found for that particular sample. At the top of that page, we can get an overall verdict of that analysis, but also information on its classifications and some of the threat names, including some of the Bauer family variants uh, that we're seeing from here. We can also see below that some of the remarks that we have on that analysis. So if, that, if the malware tried to sleep at, or lay dormant for any, for any amount of time, we can not only see how long it tried to lay dormant, but how much it was sped up to from, for this particular analysis. We can also see if the sample is rebooted at all. And this is something that's unique to VMRay as we're able to survive that reboot. And we can, we can see that below in our process graph is where I'll show you all the processes that occur and how they relate to each other. But we can also see processes that occur after the reboot, so we can continue to monitor the behavior 
after reboot reboot occurs. Now, you can go in this analysis report for different tabs to look, to look at certain details. So in the overview tab, you can get some high level information about some of the behaviors. And then with, within those, you can expand those out to look at some additional details. So you can see uh, maybe specifics on some on why this was determined to be an injector. Uh, so what, what memory is being modified. You can also look at some of the anti-analysis techniques, whether it's you know, the methods it's using to detect debuggers or also evade different uh, hooking based sandbox. Well, there we also can see the, the screenshots that occur throughout the analysis. So we can, can you, so you can actually see what might be occurring on that system, especially if it is a, a document that's being analyzed. You can see what the document may look like without opening it up yourself. Then we can, below all of this, we can see the minor attack matrix. And this allows you to see the uh, various techniques that are hit throughout the analysis and also what the corresponding threat identifier is. So you can validate this. Next, we can go through some of the other tabs to look at some more specific information, such as the network details, where we can look at the contacted IP addresses and URLs. And we can also look at some of the, the host information. So not only some of the HTTP and DNS requests, uh, also the who is, look, uh, who is analysis of this. But all, this information also goes into the reputation. And here we can see it's a known command and control server. We can also look at the file analysis that occurred. So beyond just the sample file that was detonated, we also can see information on any of the dropped, downloaded, or embedded files. And we can even submit these separately if we want to see how those behave on their own. And we can expand them out to look at more information, whether it is some of their reputation information or the memory dumps that may have occurred throughout the analysis specific to that particular sample. Now, memory dumps are one of the ways we can use to classify this, this malware since they are also compared against AV and YAR matches. And here we can see a few different uh, AV detections on this particular, on the memory dumps on this particular sample. This is something we can actually use to, to go to that AV match, which will take us to that tab and highlight the, the particular match that we're just looking for. So, and beyond just the, the sample files and drop files, we also can use memory dumps and even strings from the function calls to be able to classify this sample. For this one, we can see not only that it is an artifact, but we see it's an IOC because we see there's a DNS request for this host name is resolved, but also we see this is a known malicious domain, which is why this is a malicious verdict on that IOC. Lastly, to get any further information on our tool, you can always visit our Knowledge Center, which has our documentation, uh, especially for users, for submitting files and reviewing reports, but also looking over some of the references in our API guides. Thank you, Ben. Um, and thank you everyone for taking the time to join us today. If you are interested in a live demo, feel free to request via our website, or you can always shoot us over an email at sales at vmray.com.